Good morning. Morning. Okay, I just have uh, just had a couple of questions, and I just wanted to touch base. Yeah. So, what happens when you deal with new suppliers and you're not sure you can trust them? Yeah. Is there a system to protect you there, or? Unfortunately, not really. Um, it's always a process of risk. And okay. um, the reason why I ask is I asked one of my assistants to do some research to see how many clients or how many connections we have or have done business with in one way, shape, or form with CNC manufacturers specifically in China. So far, there's about 1,500 of them. 1,500 of, of them where, sorry, what do you mean? Manufacturers. That we deal with? No, not that no, no, many. No, that we deal with. Right. Okay, so what I was thinking, and forgive me for trying to jump ahead here, if we're trying to expand this company to $10 million, as an example, I had a conversation this morning with uh, uh, a countertop manufacturing association. And I found that the CNC, the manufacturers or the producers of countertops, about 50% of them use CNC machines. Okay, which means there's a huge upside there, right? 50% mm -hmm. of these uh, clients or potential clients uh, don't use machines, which means we should be creating or educating them to be talking to you about you know, using these machines, mm -hmm. right? Um, we're also doing other studies for other manufacturing, wood, uh, wood, metal, and, and other, and even 3D modeling. Do you get involved in 3D modeling at all? No, because it's a service, right? So it's a business built around um, unique services. So you have to have a lot of engineers on hand and... Okay, but someone has to be selling them these machines to do the 3D modeling. Are you interested in that market at all or no? Uh, yeah, it depends. It, it just depends on what, what you mean by 3D modeling because it could mean a couple of different things to different people. Um, so for example, our equipment is used for 3D modeling. Okay. Right, but if somebody were to come to me and said, I want you to make me this pen and it has to have, you know, an indent here and an engraving here and this there and that there, I'm going to say, no, sorry, we don't have the time for that okay. because it's a totally different business model and it takes up a lot of man hours, right? Okay. But, but if I you're, say, hey, yeah, sure. Here's the machine, okay. you know, you're going to figure out how to, how to do the modeling yourself. I can also give you an individual that, you know, uh, can help you with the file. We have people that make files for our customers, for example. Okay. One of the other thoughts that uh, was going through my mind is all your equipment comes in through the port of Vancouver. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you ever ship to the port of Toronto? No, you can't. Okay. So what I'm thinking is, and, and I'm only planting trees. I'm only planting a seed here. I'm wondering whether your main warehouse, your main assembly plant should be near the port of Vancouver because to bring product from Vancouver to Toronto, and if you have clients in Alberta or BC, now you're shipping the, the machine back there. So long-term strategy, um, I'm wondering whether you should have a, you know, an assembly plant out there in Vancouver to sh for the West Coast, uh, and another one here in Toronto for the East Coast shipping. Just a thought, because it's kind of silly to ship it East and to ship it West again. Yeah. Okay. So that was one of the thoughts. Um, also, again, planting trees. I know you're kind of under the gun and everything, you are hit a ceiling because of, you know, physical assembly space. And that's kind of stopping the bandwidth from thinking beyond that. But eventually, you know, within a couple of months, you'll solve that problem. Either you're going to get a big warehouse in Toronto, Vancouver, or Bowmanville, wherever that is, and that problem is going to be solved. 
Then the next problem is going to be finding more guys like um, um, uh, Eric uh, or engineers to assemble these machines. Yeah. Um, should, you, should we be looking at that? Because that could take three to six months to find those people. And the other conversation that I had this morning was with salespeople. Um, I had a couple of conversations with, with people who are, who are, well, who claim they are rainmakers. I don't know how good they are, but uh, I, I spoke with a couple of in, uh, inside sales and outside salespeople. Should we be looking at that as well? Yeah, I mean, I have ads up for both those positions. Okay. So maybe, and the other thing that I mentioned is, I, I think we need to start thinking about putting the racehorses back on the racetrack. Mm -hmm. And maybe you need a couple of admin people to take some stress off you and, uh, and Simon and the other salespeople. Uh, it would be nice, right? But you got to have a pretty technical, technical mind to, to be able to do it. Okay. Um, the, um, the other question that I was asking, and again, planting a seed is, uh, Simon was walking me through the, um, your CRM and how you use the, the system. And it's not very user friendly. There's a lot of data entry. And as you know, data, when people add data, they can make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think we should be looking at upgrading your system to a better CRM to take the, uh, the lead from your website or from social media, wherever it comes from, do a drip campaign to educate them. Um, then when it goes from an estimate to a job to to a current client, to a post client, and all those processes, it's all done automatically. And instead of Simon and you guys pushing everything forward, it's the system that's using, that's doing the brunt of the work. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I have been looking into that as well. What systems have you been looking at? Um, the one that I'm considering, give me one second, is, um, Clavio and Active Campaign. Okay, uh, those are. I think there are better systems because those are, are 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 more on the marketing side, if I remember correctly. I look at so many different software. We deal with about twenty different pieces of software that could help you. I think you mere, I think you need a more robust system that can handle your business five years from now or when you get above the 10 million range. Mm -hmm. um, I think you need a more robust system that, that deals with all the different aspects of that, including the reviews, including the, the repair orders, including the, um, uh, I mean, the drip campaigns. And there are three or four different sections of the, of the drip campaigns because and, and the other thing that, that I think we should look at, and this is some of the things where I've been talking with my people, and I just wanted to bounce this stuff off you to see how you feel. I think the salespeople, because it's such a te technical field that maybe the four or five salespeople that you have eventually will focus on a specific market, such as one of them focuses on the you know, stone manufacturing, and all he does is stone manufacturing. That's what we would definitely love to have one day. And that's what you're trying to move to move towards. Definitely. Yeah. That's the best thing you could ever do because you have an expert. Right. And while really the system is the expert and that salesperson who deals with the stone um, is looking and watching the system, to make sure the system is functioning properly and answering any oddball questions that the system can't answer. So the system is sending out training videos and education videos and client testimonials and that are specific to that product, yeah. right? And, you know, of course that, let's call him Fred, who specializes in the, in the stone, is obviously the expert. And also these leads will be coming in from stone fabricator groups and so on. And he monitors the conversation and tweaks any conversation and jumps on the phone call 
whenever is appropriate and guides these people instead of one at a time, you know, hundreds at a time or thousands at a time. And when you look at the funnel, the funnel should be a vertical process and the funnel on the first step will send that client four or five videos to educate them that they need to look at this type of machinery. Then once they inquire and say, well, how much does this cost? Then it goes to the second round, then the third round and so on, okay? So everything's automated and Frank, in this case, is jumping in every time a client has a question that the, that the system or the robots can't answer. Gotcha. Okay. And instead of dealing one client at a time, now we can deal with hundreds or thousands or even 10,000 clients at a time. Because this, this education process could take six months or could take six years. So you need to have you know, 10,000 or 20,000 of these people in different funnels, in different education systems. And when they ask the right question, then it flags and says, hey, Frank, you need to answer this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if we free up you know, Simon and, and the other people and having the admin stuff done by an admin person who is not technical, because she, she's gonna say, hey, Simon, you need to answer this question. Right. So but it's it's running that funnel um, or that education process through the whole thing where everyone in these groups and we have a number of groups that we run that create these conversations. Right. No, I'm familiar with, you know, the various concepts and the various softwares out there. You're probably referring to something like Infusionsoft or... Um... Well, no, Infusionsoft, uh, no, I would not recommend Infusionsoft because Infusionsoft is very specific, right? It's very specific to a CRM. I think you need something more robust in Infusionsoft. HubSpot? No, no, not HubSpot. Well, then what HubSpot do you is expensive is expensive um, and, it, and it has a horrible drip campaign section to it. Let's not get bogged down into picking a, uh, you know, a specific system yet. I just wanna know that your mindset is there. Um, I will pick two or three of the best solutions that I think. We'll do a couple of demos for you to see what you think and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions for me at this point? Uh, if you don't, that's fine. So let's see if we can do, get together for lunch. The other Eric is in today. The Eric, the salesperson is in today? Yes. Okay, so maybe you can let him know that I, I want to have a conversation with him. Or we can set up, um, um, a conversation when I come in on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. Sounds good. All right. Have a great day. We'll talk soon. All right. Sorry. Talk to you about. Okay. Bye.